4-meter mahogany doors. In the hall, the ceiling is painted the abduction of Ganymed. Stucco walls battered by time. Massive columns with capitals. Crystal chandeliers casting flickering shadows. Is it a medieval castle? Not at all. It's a loft in the heart of New York's Chelsea neighborhood. Behind those gigantic doors live, like in a mansion, the Spartan King Leonidas, the Phantom of the Opera, Attila, Dracula, and Beowulf. In other words, Gerard Butler, an actor accustomed to playing out-of-shape people in large-scale films. After such roles, he needed an appropriate dwelling. I wanted my apartment to be elegant, luxurious, masculine and somewhat wild, the actor explains. I would call the interior style bohemian and castle with baroque elements. Butler bought the loft, which occupies the sixth and seventh floors of a former warehouse building, several years ago, when he starred with Angelina Jolie in the second part of Lara Croft. I looked at a lot of apartments at the time, carefully pricing myself I knew that almost any purchase would bankrupt me. But I really wanted a place to live in New York, the epicenter of urban madness, he says. A realtor recommended architect Alexander Gorlin to Butler. Butler had the apartment gutted, taking down all the walls, leaving only the load-bearing columns, and replaced them with a single wall separating the office and bedroom. Having thus hidden the intimate parts of the apartment, Gorlin left all the windows in the public area open, without curtains. In starting to decorate the interior, Butler met with many decorators. But all of their ideas seemed to him trivial and unexciting. And then he met Elvis Ristino, actually a film production designer, through mutual friends. Taking Butler's love of shabby walls as their starting point, they began designing the interior. Ristino says Butler's apartment blends old architectural details with the sets just like those on the movie sets. For example, inside the giant carved doors are hidden, like the stuffing in a sandwich, another metal one. The painting on the ceiling is not a fresco but a picture painted on paper for movie posters. The walls and columns that look ancient are just layered plaster and wood. The public part of the loft houses the dining area, living room, kitchen, and home theater, where Butler watches everything — dramas, thrillers, and action movies. The entrance to the movie theater area is marked by a wooden portal, a beam resting on a pair of columns from India, and decorated with an antique lion's head. I wanted to hang a red curtain there too, Butler says dreamily, but I still held myself back. Butler is almost always on the road on the set or in the promotions of his paintings. He has and other places to live a house in Los Angeles, an apartment in London, and soon, according to rumors, will appear another in Moscow. But the actor tries to be in New York as often as possible the apartment on which he spent four years, he really likes every time I open the huge door, looking at the crystal chandeliers, I think how lucky I am. Luck has nothing to do with it. Butler is the creator of his own happiness. Like his favorite hero, the Phantom of the Opera, he personally compassed his refuge and embodied the idea. The Phantom, however, lived in the basement, while Butler had the Empire State Building outside his windows, but life should be at least somewhat different from the movies. That's all. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave a like. All for now.